So now I have my wireframe in Photoshop. So I've got my wireframe and I've got my texture. Let me just uh, resize that. Okay, or my image. And what I'm going to do is just I'm just going to quickly cut out this image. I don't need to be particularly uh, careful about it. In fact, I'm going to do. I'm just going to start again there. So uh, for those that aren't familiar with Photoshop, um, I'm going to use this tool here. Okay, so in here you have a selection of kind of cutting tools you've got basic um, uh, shapes that you can cut out here like squares and uh, rectangles and ellipses and things like that and then if you want to cut out a more complex shape you've got these tools here I'm just going to use this tool here okay and uh, what that allows me to do is literally click around the object I'm going to just do a really rough cut I don't need to be particularly precise about this at all this is fine for our purposes and I'm going to click on here. Okay, now I'm going to go Control C and go into our image, and I'm going to paste that in. Okay, so what we want to do is be able to see both images at the same time. So one way of doing this is if I go into, if I uh, notice how um, in Photoshop we've got layers. So this is my background layer. At the uh, this the, the wireframe is acts as my background layer, and then our texture or our image that we're planning to use as a texture is a layer on the front and what I can do is if I can click this I could click multiply okay um, yeah so multiply is not really giving us the result so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this I'm going to try some different ones and I think what I'm going to try is difference okay and that works fine so you can see I can see now this wireframe over the top of this image so I can start manipulating this image to kind of fit this wireframe so first thing we want to do is I want to just kind of get the general you know generally shape the entire image to fit this okay so I'm gonna go um, I'm gonna go control T uh, so what I want to do is select uh, image so make sure that this image is selected because this is the image that I'm going to be manipulating and I'm gonna go image and um, uh, let's have a look sorry uh, image uh, or oh, edit transform okay in fact what I want to do is a free transform so I'm going to do a free transform and the shortcut for that is control T okay so what you'll see me do a lot is just press control T okay so I'm going to go control T and you can see that that's going to allow me now to start manipulating this and fitting this to our head so I'm just going to do that as we speak And I suppose the best thing to do really is actually focus on aligning some key points. So I'm thinking like a key point would be the eyes. So I've got, I might focus on really trying just to align the eyes and the mouth, okay, uh, as best as I can. So that looks good, okay. Um, and you can see that, yeah, the jaws kind of coming together there, um, and the head is also coming together there. Great. Yeah. I think we'll take that as a starting point. Okay, so uh, when I'm happy with that, I'm going to go Control Enter. So what I'm going to do is start selecting areas to align them a little bit more carefully. So uh, I'm going to start with the eye, I think. Okay, and what I tend to do is when I'm doing something like this, um, what we want to do is we want to select the area that we want to warp. Okay, so the area we select is the area that we're going to manipulate, and the other areas are the areas that are going to be left alone. Okay, and what I tend to do is try and select um, uh, where I do my selections is try and go through areas where there's not too much detail. So, for example, I just want to fine tune this eye, and what I'm going to do is select across this area around here where there's not too much detail okay here we go okay so I'm going to select that uh, and then what I tend to do uh, what I tend to find helpful as well is if you feather the edge of the selection as well it just means that your any adjustments that you do blend in a little bit better so I'm just going to go uh, into the select menu and go modify uh, feather and just select, I tend to just go a couple of pixels, okay? 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something called a warp transform. Okay, so I'm going to go transform, warp, okay. And what this allows you to do then is then take any point in this area that you've selected and just start pulling it. So I can just grab this, do you see what I mean, and start pulling this eye to get this eye to really kind of match up with uh, the eye that we have uh, with the actual wireframe. Okay, and I can do this in some with some detail okay excellent so that's all matched up in fact what I might do is just pull that up a little bit just yeah and just give it a bit of overlap okay and when we're happy with that warp I can press enter okay um, now one of the things to look for is I'm just having a look here and just wondering if I'm leaving any gaps. I can see some dark areas here, so that's kind of suggesting that I might end up leaving some gaps. So what I might do is just pull this up like so. Okay, and it's going to pull this up. So let's pull this out a little bit. This just makes sure that there's no gaps left. Okay, and you can just see you can see these dark areas here. So just where I've done this adjustment, you can see it's just kind of making some gaps here okay um, one of the things to be careful of though is when you do that you might end up pulling this back out so just keep an eye of what's happening in here and in fact I think I can kind of see that's the case here so it's sort of pulling it back out so what I might do is just leave that there for the moment and find another way of solving that problem so I'm going to press enter and then what I want to do is I'm going to go um, I want to see what the result of that is so in terms of the overall texture so I'm going to go um, uh, sorry, I'm going to go into my select. I'm going to tell it to deselect. I'm just going to turn this background layer off where the wireframe is. I'm going to just turn that off. Okay, let's have a look. So everything in my texture is good, but you can see I've got some lines around here. So what I can do is I can use, just as a result of where I've done this warp, and it's just pulled this in a little bit. What I can do is I can... Um, uh, I can actually uh, paint over that. So I'm going to use something called the clone tool. So here we have, uh, if I roll over this, this is the clone tool here. I'm going to select this clone tool. And again, just fine tune the settings. This is quite a large brush at the moment. So I can fine tune the settings of any of my tools using the uh, menu at the top here. So this is contextual. You see these menu options change depending on the tool that I've got selected. So reselect my clone tool go into here and I can actually just change this down so I'm going to go to about like 35, 36 keep it fairly soft, I'm happy with that okay um, so soft means that, that that it's blending the effect in that, that I'm doing, it's not got a hard edge to it okay and what the clone tool does is it allows me to select a point on the image, if I press alt you can see that the icon changes and I can select a point on the image and I can say right I want to take that and I want to paint that over here okay so I might be able to actually do that a little bit better. Yeah, Paint that over here, okay? So you can see I'm just filling in these gaps, okay? Uh, and this is quite a common technique that you'll use, a, a, a fairly, uh, yeah, fairly commonly, I would say, a lot, okay? So there we are, and I've just filled in that gap. So I'm happy with that warp now. And then what I could do is I could do the same for the other eye. I'm actually going to try and focus on the mouth now. So I'm going to come down here. Again, I'm going to do a, um, a warp through. So I'm going to kind of warp around. Uh, obviously, these hairs potentially could cause us a problem. But again, I'm trying to warp around an area that doesn't have a huge amount of detail in it. OK, uh, I just want to. And obviously, you've got to make sure you close the uh, close the lasso as well okay there we are uh, and I'm gonna go image uh, in fact what I might try to do I might try just do it without the feather this time and see if that gives me a better result so I'm just gonna go transform warp and see if it works better without the feather uh, sometimes it can be a better way to go okay so I'm just trying to think so in fact the what we could do is just pulling this we kind of need to reshape this person into well, it's not really a smile, but he's his lips are kind of going downwards, and the wireframe is kind of flat. So we need to kind of correct that. Let's have a look here. That's looking better. Okay. 
And then I'm kind of just looking at how the rest of this, I might, I think the lips are a little bit fat, so I might try and reduce the lips a little bit. Okay, let's try and pull this up. Okay, and this is a fairly aggressive warp that we've done. You can see it's created kind of a lot of other problems. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and see if I can actually patch that up a little bit without affecting too much of what we've done here. I think we can. Let's try that. I think that's working quite well. If I'm fairly even with the way that I'm kind of overlapping this, it kind of is kind of working. Obviously, I can't pull that down because that's going to start causing a problem there. Again, just want to probably just want to try and pull this down a little bit more. It's a lot of fine tuning and a lot of sort of iteration as you go through. I'm wondering whether that's just causing me other problems now. Uh, one of the things you can do is you've got this history panel as well. Uh, if you can't see that, you can just go into Windows uh, History and uh, you can just kind of go through the history. Uh, or if you're not happy with the way the warp's going, you can just go escape and then restart the warp. Okay, And, and I often end up doing that. Uh, so I'm just going to just do the warp again, okay, and let's see what we end up doing. You don't have to stick with something that's not working out. Uh, in fact, what I might do is actually um, put a feather on it this time. So I might go modify, uh, feather the selection, yep, and now what I'm going to do is... Uh, Sorry, I'm just going to go and, uh, yeah, I want to do a warp. So forgetting where I was in my process there. Great, okay, so again, just pull this down, pull this up, pull this up, pull this down. trying to get this the right shape that's looking better okay that's looking quite good actually so what I might do is I might grab that okay and then what I might do is um, uh, another approach I could use is to yeah, I'm going to go uh, deselect. So one approach I could use, so you can see where the warp's overlapping. The feathers worked really well, but obviously you can see that the warp's created these gaps. Now what I could do is, um, I'm, I'm, what I'd like, what I'm going to try is actually see if I can do a warp uh, around this part of the face here. So I'm going to take this part of the face here and see if I can warp that in order to kind of meet this but I might end up let's have a look see if that works so I'm going to try and just warp this to kind of cover up that hole let's see if that works so image uh, transform warp let's see if that works so just going to try and yeah it's not working brilliantly is it it's kind of creating other problems as I do that I might be able to use it to a point, to a certain extent, but I think after a while it's going to it's going to cause problems. Let's have a look. Uh, let's pull this handle here. Again, what I'm trying to do is see if I can get this to cover up that area. It's not really doing a drastic uh, uh, effort. I think I'm just going to go escape and try out a different tactic. Okay, so what I might do is actually just stick with the clone tool. 
uh, and just clone in these areas. So I'm going to go select, deselect, and often you know you try something out and it doesn't quite work, and you think, well, okay, I'm going to go with a diff different tactic, see if that works uh, better. Okay, so I'm going to go with the uh, clone tool. Uh, again, I'm going to grab this and I'm going to clone this area here, the chin. Um, okay, press Alt and just clone and fill this in. Okay, and you can see where I've got a bit of stubble. I can easily just take an area of stubble there and just keep filling that in as well. That's all fine. Um, obviously, try and keep it looking natural and even. So just be careful how you're doing that. go here fab okay so you can see that we've aligned that and then you just go through doing that sort of process again I'm going to just grab the clone tool uh, let's try and clone this sort of area here might have to do this in bits but yeah that's working out well uh, let's try and because it's kind of like a nasally bit so I'm trying to see if I can kind of get this bit yeah. And you know, I'm not trying to fill it all in in one go. Okay, just do little patches at a time. Excellent. Okay, I'm really happy with that. That's worked out nicely. So, you can see how you can use the clone tool to really kind of help out. And I was pressing alt a lot there to kind of reposition what I was doing, etc., etc. So I can go through and uh, fix my image together in, in, in using that sort of method. Um, uh, a couple of things I would say as well is I'm not going to go and do the whole thing in front of you because I think I'll just take forever. But you can see I could do the nose, I could do the eyes. Um, one of the key things you'll probably want to have a look at is the ears. Okay, um, what I actually ended up doing when I did the ears. Um, is I actually ended up uh, literally just uh, cutting the ears along here. Uh, I thought if I cut it down where the hair is, because the hair is quite a noisy piece of detail there, uh, you can actually uh, get away with using the clone tool quite nicely. Um, so I'm just going to do that. Uh, hang on, sorry, control. If I just go backspace, it allows me to backspace this selection here. So I'll do that. And then all I did was just, I actually, rather than doing a warp, because it's so far out, uh, I just went, uh, I just actually did a free transform. So I just went control T and literally just moved the ear. Okay. Uh, and then, then I did a warp to kind of get it right. So kind of move the ear into the right place, uh, in a better place. In fact, actually, no, I didn't, didn't do a warp. Let's just rescale. Okay. And, uh, yeah, kind of rescaled this, uh, so I took a slightly different approach for this. Um, one of the things to keep in mind as well is it doesn't matter if your image is kind of going off the edge of the wireframe. When you project this onto, um, so when you project this onto your face, uh, back onto your face in Maya, what will happen is where it doesn't land on the face, where it falls off the edge, you'll just lose that anyway. So don't worry about that. Okay. So don't worry about going over the edge. That's just detail that, uh, that, that, that isn't going to be used anyway. Okay. So yeah, I'm just going to resize this to kind of fit, fit it. Um, I think I'm close enough there. I might need to do a warp. Um, slightly odd how, uh, I haven't got this back render. I think my back face culling has actually caused me some problems that I hadn't anticipated with this edge. So maybe there's advantages and disadvantages to the back face culling. Uh, something to consider there. It's not allowing me to really see where that edge is. I can kind of guess where it is, but it's not ideal. Again, I'm just going to do, uh, let's do a warp. Let's get this ear correct first. Free try. Oh, sorry. Didn't want to do that. I'm going to do uh, image base or transform warp okay and just kind of just warp the shape of this ear to kind of better fit what what I want from an ear and I guess really what I want to focus on as well is make sure that this inner ear detail so that what's going on with this inner ear is fitting as well uh, etc and in fact actually to be honest with this front view you want to be you know 
you could argue that with his front view, actually what's going to happen is more of the detail of the ear is going to come from the side view. So, you know, you could argue that you can only really take this so far anyway. So that's my ear. Then what I'm going to do, because, you know, basically you're going to actually, the, the actual texture you're going to end up putting on this ear is more likely to come from the side view than from the front view. Okay, so you could argue actually there's almost no point doing this because you're not going to end up using this bit of the front image. That's going to be replaced by the side view. Okay, and then I can just go back to my clone tool. So if I go uh, deselect again, I can go, and I tend to like to turn off the background. It just helps me look at what I'm doing and see it a bit more clearly. Okay, and one of the things about the background as well is you can see often, you, often when you have the wireframe on there, you, there's bits that you miss. So for example, I'm going to go... Uh, uh, sorry, I'm actually going to go, uh, there we go. Um, and actually thinking about this, uh, if I go back into uh, Maya, thinking about this, when we outputted our wireframe, actually one of the things that might have been useful is actually rather than having wireframe, um, actually have um, uh, like a wireframe on shaded. So I'm just going to go... Uh, uh, smooth wireframe, hang on, that's not what I wanted, I wanted wireframe on shaded, and actually it may have been better to actually output this output uh, and, and use this as a reference, because not only do you have the wireframe, you have the lighting that's hitting the model, so you've got kind of the contours, and then that would give you a much clearer edge also to model against. So actually thinking about it, we should have used this technique, and we should have actually um, uh, uh, outputted it uh, outputted this I think would have been a better reference to work against than uh, than what we're working with in Photoshop now and I think in that case the multiply would have worked better but anyway we've got what we've got so we can make this work so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the clone tool and clone this I'm trying to think of if that's looking correct. And what I might actually do is make the uh, brush a bit smaller. Mm, I think I'll get a bit wider than that. Yeah. Let's try that. Okay. Let's just add in just that little bit of detail here just to kind of connect all that up. Okay, notes how I'm pressing Alt a lot to kind of start resampling things. Um, and this probably needs a bit of cleanup, actually. Let's have a look here. Yeah, again, but that's again, it's going to just get chopped off. It's not a problem if that goes over. One thing we might want to just ensure is that we do have that, that sort of image there and we have got all of that detail. So that's the um, uh, that's the process, really, uh, in terms of working with it. I, I use the warp tool to kind of, uh, in uh, areas, to align them carefully. Uh, and then what I do is use the clone tool just to cover up any patches that get left behind. And I work through the image in that way. So um, I'll just show you what I've ended up with. Okay, so this is my front head that I've edited. And if I put that onto, and you can see if I've actually outputted this um, shaded model. So I can kind of, and I'm using the uh, multiply. Um, uh, sorry, no, I'm just using normal shading here. Uh, and uh, in fact, sorry if I get that right. Yeah, multiply. I'm just using the multiply so I can see them both together. And obviously, if I want to see it, the, the, the actual texture, I just turn this layer off. Okay. So you can see actually, they, you know, I can see I've got a really good alignment between all my features. And actually, the nice thing about the multiply is it also shows me exactly where my textures are. And I'm not worried about stuff that's like coming off the edge of this image as well. So um, the only other thing I would say about this background image is because it's slightly yellow tinge, if I just did a gray tinge or something that's quite white, uh, that would work much better with the multiply uh, in here. Okay, so just kind of refining the technique and making life as easy as possible. Um, so that's my front view and I've got a side view as well. Again, quite happy with that. Every, all the features are lined up really nicely. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I want to save these. I, I'll save the Photoshop files, obviously, but what, because I might want to go back in and edit them. But if I go, uh, but in terms of outputting this, what I want to do is just output this one layer. So I'm just going to I'm just going to isolate this one texture layer and just literally output that. And I'm going to go File, Save As. And I tend to like to save it as a Targa file. Okay, but you could use TIFF, TIFF or Targa, whatever, uh, and bring that in. 
Okay, so that's how we actually kind of edit and align our images. Okay, 